Hi, this is Yukabuka and welcome to my home on YouTube. In this video, the first video in the Reading Code with Yukabuka series, we will look at the kernel code that is executed when the snippet, when the user space snippet of code shown here executes. Uh, let's quickly go through the code to figure out what it does. As we can see, it opens a file descriptor to a device dev binder in read-only mode. And there is no specific reason for me using binder. Uh, you could use any other drive. You could use almost any other driver for purposes of this example that export an MMAP FOPS, but we'll get to that soon. Uh, and as the next step, we MMAP a region into memory uh, and we pass the file descriptor as the second last argument. That is the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth argument. Now, when this happens, when this MMAP call is executed, what happens is that a very specific function inside the binder driver is executed. And the name of, and we, let's take a quick look at that function. As you can see, binder fops has a struct file operations that is, has a struct file operations defined. This structure expresses what system calls can be performed on the device. So it says that you can open the device, you can perform ioptels on the device, you can mmap the device, and so on. If we execute the user space code shown in the previous example, execution will eventually flow to binder underscore mmap. In today's video, we will try to figure out how execution reaches binder mmap from the entry point of the mmap system call. Okay. So first of all, let us go to mmap.c inside the folder mm. And this here is the entry point of the mmap system call. When you perform an mmap system call, this is where it starts executing. As you can see, the arguments are pretty much the exact same as what we had used in the user space code snippet that I had showed you that I had shown you a while back. And if you have any doubts about what these arguments stand for, I would encourage you to check the man page for mmap. Uh, the flags argument specifically uh, my is is the flags argument is good enough reason to go through the man page of mmap. So first of all, we see that this particular if condition is executed, and we did not pass the map anonymous file. Uh, flag and the reason for this is that we do have a file backing this mapping and that is expressed as the file descriptor and in this particular case it checks if anonymous is set and there is a not which means that there is a file backing this map there is a file backing this mapping however once it gets the file from the file descriptor, and file is a structure, a in-kernel structure that represents uh, all possible open files, all open files. Once that is done, uh, it checks if the file is related to huge pages. But in our case, these, this code just does not exist. And so we don't really have to worry about it. The only thing that happens that is of any relevance at all is this. That is, file is set based on the file descriptor. And so this, S, this else block is just not executed. And so we get to this point. 
Now, if you look at the man page, you can see that these two flags are ignored, and that is what you see here. These two flags are being unset, even if they are set. After that, we go into the VM map page off function with pretty much the same arguments that we passed in, except that instead of the FD, we have the file structure. Now, once you go into the VM map page off, you see that there is a pointer to current arrow mm. Now, current is a kernel global pointer that points to the current task that is executing. It is of type task struct. Now task struct is the structure in the kernel which is the schedulable entity. That is any kernel task that can be scheduled has will have a corresponding instance of task struct. Now, shortly after now, we, what so what's happening here is that the current tasks has a list of all the virtual memory areas that have been mapped in. So a pointer to that list is being stored in mm. That's all there is. Shortly after, you see a security underscore function and the security underscore function in the Linux kernel means that it's part of the LSM that is the Linux security module and in this case specifically SA Linux so we will assume that we have access to the drive to the driver that we are opening and that this function will succeed so we will not go down that road right now as the function succeeds, we go inside this function and we can see that a lock is acquired for mm before this function is called and the lock is released after that function. Now, that indicates that the function is modifying the mm argument somehow. And, uh, and as we see that mmap essentially creates a new virtual memory area. It should not be surprising that it does add an item to the list pointed to by mm. Let's go inside do mmap pg off. And we see that there are two functions or two files that define this function. For now, we are not interested in the option without an mmu as all modern computers use an MMU and so we will look at the first option. At the first option we can see that there are quite a few sanity checks that are going on and I will not go into the details of all these checks. Um, we can see that eventually it calls a function get unmapped area and as the comment suggests, it lets us obtain an address to map to. Going further down, we see that if the address for some reason is not uh, aligned along the page size, it is made to be aligned that way. We scroll further down and we see that we enter the specific if loop. We know that uh, our file struct should be valid at this point and we can see that there are a couple of sanity checks being performed. That is if flags has map type set then there are some, there are some cases in which it should not execute and based on that, it returns an EXS error. It's the same for case map private and so on. Finally, if all those cases succeed and we do not return an error message, an, an error return code, we call the function map region. Let's look at what map region does. 
inside the mmap region function we can see that an iteration of the list pointed to by mmap is done and you can see that it's counting the VMA pages that mm already has at this point that's what it's doing you can and it's over here it's checking if the process can have any more private writable mappings that is if it ha does it have enough memory to have another mapping in its process address space that is the check being performed here and this is whether it, over here it checks if two mappings are overlapping and if it is can it be merged that's what's being ha that that's what's happening here and finally and and in this case if the merge succeeds then you're essentially just changing the bounds of a VMA that is a virtual memory area uh, and you're not allocating a new virtual memory area so as a result it just returns at this point however if you need a totally new virtual memory area you can see that it's being allocated at this point its mm is being set to the current arrow mm its start end flags protection and page offset are being set to values that we passed from user space and finally, at this point, we see that the file arrow fop arrow mmap is being called. Now, the file arrow fop at this point will point to binder underscore fops. And as a result, the file and the VMA, that the VMA, the virtual memory area, and the pointer to the file are being passed to that function. So at this point, let's go back to binder fops and then go to binder mmap. And we'll see what arguments that function receives. As you can see, this is binder fops. And if you go to mmap, you can see that it takes two arguments exactly the same as what we saw at the point where the function was being called uh, and it passes in a virtual memory area and a FOB structure. Now at this point once again for clarity's sake we know that the FOB structure points to the file structure corresponding to this instance of the driver being open and the VMA is a pointer to the virtual memory area that was just created. I hope this video has been useful enough and has clarified any doubts you may have about how a map can be used, about how about the underlying working of a map being used uh, in user space along with file descriptors obtained from opening driver files. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. That's it for now.